Hey, I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company, and this is Goulet Q&A, episode number 28. This is on Pilot Namiki pens. Now, originally, I'd opened it up to just Pilot Namiki pens, ink, you know, well, I think that's about all they make, but I didn't get any ink questions. Everything I got was about pens. So I just went ahead and changed the topic to pens. That way you would know exactly what you're getting into. So Pilot Namiki, same company, different branding. I'll get into that in just a little bit. But before I do that, I do want to apologize for not being here last week. I'm sorry, I was traveling on business. And it's not often that I do that. It's a lot of coordination that I have to do, especially because we flew. Um, and you know, it's, uh, it's quite a monumental effort. We have two young kids, my wife and I, um, a two-year-old and a four-year-old. We had to coordinate, you know, grandparents watching the kids and all that stuff. It's, it's a huge effort, so we try not to travel very much. But while I was doing that, I went ahead and took the opportunity, since it's not often that I fly, to take a couple of pens and see if I could get them to leak in flight. Um, so I have a video that's going to be coming out on that. Spoiler alert, no major leaks. Sorry. But I did get to do a little experiment. It was kind of fun. So um, I already have a video on flying with pens, and I, I followed my own advice. Uh, on one direction and then I went against my own advice on the other direction. So you'll have to see how that turns out, but that'll be coming sometime soon. Um, but I should be getting back in the swing of things now. I know it's been a little crazy. I've had to cancel a couple of Q&As in the last month or so because of some work things and I apologize for that, but I'm back, I promise. I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be regular, getting back into the swing of things with more videos. Um, I just posted my first short video, a quick look. Uh, on the Lamy All-Star. You'll have to check that one out if you haven't seen it already. I plan to do a lot more like that one. But last thing I wanted to point out here before I really get into it is I just happen to have a Lamy Blue Green All-Star. The only reason I bring up this pen in a pilot one is because this shirt that I just happened to buy completely separately almost exactly matches this pen, which is almost exactly the color that we painted our conference room here at Goulet as well. So whenever I wear this shirt in that room, People always make fun of me because it's like I'm camouflaged in there. It's kind of funny. Maybe I'll have to Instagram that or something at some point. But anyway, so this is going to be the last Q&A that I'm going to be doing in my 20s because it is almost my 30th birthday. I feel like this young hotshot, you know, running my own company and stuff in my 20s. But now I feel like, ah, oh, I'm in my 30s. Ah, I guess it's, you know, it's time to grow up a little bit, you know, whatever. I mean, I've got two kids in a business and all that stuff. So I guess I've done enough growing up so far, but... <laughs> If you watch these Q&A, oh, you know what? I forgot to flip my little thing. I didn't have my thing last time and, you know, thought I'd bring it back. What the heck? So anyway, got my birthday next week. That's kind of fun. So I'll be 30. Rachel will be almost 30. We're a couple of weeks apart. And so she's going to make fun of me more than she ever has because she'll still be in her 20s and I'll be in my 30s. So anyway, let's get into it here. I got a bunch of good questions about Pilot and Namiki pens. A lot of really good stuff. So thank you everybody who asked a question. Uh, I think I'm able to answer most the questions that I got. So good variety here. So let's get into it. So first question, actually I have three questions from Mike N that I got in an email. I'm going to kind of break them out separately, but Mike, you had some good questions. I'm going to kick it right off. So uh, you asked, when are you expecting to have the Pilot Resin Falcon with the soft, extra fine nib back in stock? Oh, Mike, I know, man. I feel your pain. We are dying for these pens. There is a worldwide shortage of these pens. Uh, and so we have been waiting for them for a while. And we're going to wait a little bit more. We're told early May is when these things are supposed to come in. I'll have to wait and see. It's really tough because there's been a big demand on these pens and we are just kind of sitting here. We've got them on order. We've got a lot of them on order and we're just waiting for them to come in. So please just be patient with us. Thank you. Sign up for the email notification list on gouletpens.com and you'll get an email as soon as we have them back in. That's the best I can do for you. Um, you asked Mike, what is your recommendation on cleaning a Con70 converter? So for those of you that don't know, the Con70 converter is a Pilot proprietary converter. Looks like this. It's a big converter. It's a push button. It's kind of a combination push vacuum converter. And it only fits a couple of their pens. It's the Custom 74, it fits the Justice 95, and the Pilot Metal Falcon. Uh, it may fit some other non-US uh, base pens in Japan, uh, some of those Pilot pens, but th those are the only that I'm aware of. Go to goodlaypens.com. We carry all the Pilot pens that there are uh, in the US. 
So check, check that out. But this is the Con 70, so it fits the same pens that the Con 20, the Con 50, and the Pilot and Mickey cartridges fit on. Um, any of those that are big enough bodied, with the pens that I just mentioned, will fit this Con 70. Uh, but the problem is, when you go to clean this thing out, because of the way that this thing fills, it has like a spring mechanism up in the top here and ink gets all up in there. And the best way I've found to fill it is to have running water going over here and to kind of push the button and then shake the living daylights out of the thing and then, th and then kind of shake it out. You really can't get it 100% clean. It's really kind of annoying, personally. You can actually take the thing apart. It's, um, it's kind of glued in place, so um, it takes a little bit of force to kind of crack it. But if you take it apart, you know, you can actually remove the sleeve that holds onto the back here and it'll pull out and you can see that there's some stuff going on up here and this little rod that's got the, the seal on it just kind of slides up and down. So what I like to do when I'm cleaning it is I take it apart like, like so. I have running water that goes in this area and I kind of take this little part and I you know just gyrate that a little bit and that tends to kind of loosen things up. I use a Q-tip, kind of clean out the inside here. And that's really about all you can do. You know, reassemble the thing, grease it up if you want to, it's not super necessary, and then you can screw it back together. So that's about the best I can do. Honestly, I use this pen, this converter a lot in my Custom 74, and what I've found is that uh, I just kind of resort to sticking to similar color inks. You know, blues, purples, blue blacks, that kind of thing in that pen. It's not my ideal pen for swapping out a lot of colors. Keeping in mind, this thing's got like a one milliliter ink capacity. So if you are swapping a lot of colors anyway, it might be better to use a pen that's a little easier to clean out than one that uses this cartridge. So that's about the best I got. The other option you can do, if you happen to have an ultrasonic cleaner, that would work pretty well for getting, the, getting this thing cleaned out. Um, you can get the small ultrasonic cleaner for like 30 bucks on Harbor Freight. Um, that's another option for you too. Good question though. I have it on my to-do list to shoot a video on cleaning the Con 70 converter. It just hasn't been like high enough priority. So hopefully this will help ease your pain a little bit. And the last question that Mike had, have you used a Justice 95? If so, what's your impression of the adjustable nib? Would you be able to do a review of it? Uh, yes, I will plan to do a review of it one of these days. It's been on my to-do list forever, again. Um, it does write really well. It feels kind of similar to the Falcon, if you've ever used a Namiki or Pilot Falcon, um, except that you can adjust the hardness of the flex. It's not necessarily adjusting the amount of the flex, but how much pressure is required to do the flexing. When you have the thing at its softest level, it feels pretty similar to the soft fa Falcon. Um, if you go harder, then it's less softness. So I would say if you want to use it more like a regular pen, put it on the harder level, and it's a pretty good regular pen. It won't flex too much. If you want to flex it out, you turn it to the softness, and then you can really get that kind of flex. You can still kind of emulate that, you know, like if you have a Falcon, if you just write with lighter pressure, you don't have to get that line variation if you don't want it. Um, but having that adjustable hardness allows you to kind of, if you have a heavier hand, write more normally, without getting that flex if you don't want it. Or if you do like the flex and you kind of want to fine tune it to your own writing pressure, that's where it really kind of comes in. Um, that pen does take a Con 70 converter, as we just mentioned. Um, so that's that's kind of about it. I To do a full review of that, I don't know is gonna be coming right away just because my time is, is extremely limited right now. Uh, but I am probably going to be doing a quick look video on that coming soon. So a minute to two minute video, kind of just touching on the highlights of that pen, showing off some features. Not a full in-depth thing, but that will be coming at some point, I promise. Uh, at Dowdyism on Twitter, Brad Dowdy. Um, shout out to you there, the pen addict, for those of you who know him. He's a bigger deal in the pen world than I am, I would say. At least in the blogging, uh, podcasting world. Brad does a lot of good stuff. He's recommended me a bunch of times and no official affiliation between the two of us, but he's, he's a good, good guy. Does a lot of, lot of good stuff for the, the writing community, pen, fountain pen community. So shout out there. Um, asked, uh, what's the best way to clean the inside the top portion of a vanishing point near the trap door part? Um, so that's a great question. I get asked that a bunch. 
Uh, that's probably another thing that I should shoot a video on actually at some point. That would be a nice little quick video. So uh, the Pilot Vanishing Point is a click fountain pen for those of you who are not aware. Uh, you click on the back of it and it's got a little trap door in here. I can't really show you in the video easily, but the nib kind of pokes out, the trap door is open up. When you put it back in, the trap door flips up. Well, what happens is if you have any ink that you're carrying it around and ink kind of leaks in there or something to that nature, you can get ink kind of up in that trap door area and you can't really fit a Q-tip in there or anything. So it's like, how, what's the best way to clean that out? Um, well, to take the pen apart, you just kind of unscrew it in the middle. You can pull the nib unit out of there and then that part you can kind of clean independently. But then you're left with this front body of the pen, which is where the trap door is and all that. And you can't really open the trap door without the nib unit because that's kind of how it all works. So really kind of the, I haven't found a magical way to do this. Um, there's a couple of different options for you. You can either just use, you know, running water under a faucet, kind of get it in here and then just kind of cover the end with your thumb and just shake the living daylights out of it. That's one way to get it. That kind of cleans the inside where the trap door is kind of shut and where the nib, that's where most of your ink's gonna be. But some of it might seep, seep out from the trap door or something like that. Uh, then what you do is just do the opposite. You just get a little water in this way cover the whole shake the living daylights out of it and then kind of dump it out and just kind of keep doing that over and over again until you don't have an inky water mixture coming out. Once you have only clean water is coming out, you, you pretty much got everything. And then just kind of let it dry out because these are kind of metal components. If you have like compressed air or anything, you can always, I guess, blow it in there to kind of expedite the process. Um, you could always use, kind of use a Q-tip on the inside here. I don't know that I've ever done that. I usually just, once it's dry, I kind of hold it firmly and then kind of shake it out to get any water droplets out of there and then just let it air dry. Um, but I don't really soak clean the pens that often. Um, yes, yeah, soaking, sorry. Soaking is another option. You can just kind of soak it, move the pen around inside a cup of water, get all the air bubbles out, and then just leave it there for a little while. I don't, I'm not a, as big a fan of that method just because I personally don't know um, all the different components that are inside these pens. So I would assume that everything in here is water resistant, waterproof, because you know, it's dealing with ink anyway. So I would assume that it's gonna be okay, but I don't know the official pilot kind of stance on soaking this pen completely in water. So maybe look at some other sources, some other recommendations on that. Don't completely take my word as bond on that one. Um, the other option, if you are doing the flushing thing, is you can use a bulb syringe, you know, like a little baby blue bulb syringe here. And you can use that to kind of help flush and force ink through here. That's another option. Uh, or the other thing you could do, if you have an ink syringe, is you can get the syringe tip into the trap door part a little better and kind of, you know, flush that out a little more too. It might allow you to get a little more concentrated kind of force than just running water in a faucet would. So a couple of different options for there. Hopefully that helps you out, Brad, but um, that would be my recommendation there. Uh, Shane H on Facebook said, I've been writing with my Pilot Metropolitan with the nib upside down to get a finer line out of it. Will this damage the nib in the long run? Now, this is a practice that I uh, pointed out in one of my videos called Flip That Nib. It's something that a lot of fountain pen folks have uh, been doing for a while. Uh, if you're writing with the nib, so they grind the tip of the nib so that it feels smooth while you're writing it. But on a lot of pens, if you take the pen and you turn it upside down like this, not like this. If you're doing it that way, you're not gonna have a very thick line because <laughs> you're not gonna have an ink. Uh, but if you have it, you know, like normal, it's going to write like normal. But if you flip it over so that the feed is facing towards the sky, it's probably going to feel pretty scratchy, but you'll usually be able to get a finer line while you're writing with the nib upside down. And why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes it's going to feel pretty scratchy. It's not going to be the best writing experience because they're not really grinding the nibs to be used in that direction. Uh, but the reason that you do it that way is if you have paper that you are using that's really, really absorbent or you need to write something really tiny and you know, you've got this super absorbent paper, if you're flipping the nib and writing with it upside down, you, it usually writes a much finer line than the, whatever nib size that this is ground to. So it's kind of a, a nice little trick that you can do when you are in that situation. It's not something that, you know, I would probably recommend doing a ton um, you know, unless you really are just comfortable writing that way. But you're, you're using a Pilot Metropolitan Shane. It's a $15 pen. 
it's not going to be the end of the world if you ruin that pen. I mean, you will be able to, to use it ongoing, or you will be able to replace it if you need to. It's not like it's a vanishing point or a Justice 95 or something, you know. $15 is what you pay, you know, for a replacement nib for most other pens when you're getting the whole pen. So I wouldn't sweat it too much on that pen. Other pens, maybe try to limit it as much as you can. I, the, the one key thing is to, to use a light touch. If you're really pressing hard on that, then you can bend the nib out of shape and it's, you don't want to do that. So the pen's not really made to be written upside down like that, but it's something that a lot of people do. Um, so I would say, you know, go ahead and go for it. Just do whatever you want with that pen and just see how it goes. If you've already been using it a lot, then I say go for it. You'll probably be okay. <clears throat> Gene P on Facebook, Gene, yeah, Gene P on Facebook. I like the Custom Heritage 912 with an FA nib, and it's not offered here in the US. Can you special order? I would love to, but I cannot. Um, go to goodlaypens.com, look, look at the Pelican, look at the Pilot offerings that we have that's all we can get right there. We carry everything that Pilot has, at least as of the shooting of this video. Um, so we, uh, there's, there's definitely some pens, you know, some of the custom heritages, there's, there's several different models that we don't have that we can't get. There's like the FA nib, that's a special nib that's over there and we cannot get it. So it kills me because I would love to get it, you know, especially because I'm a huge fan of Pilot pens. I got, they got a lot of great stuff. I would love to expand my pilot line into some of the things that are not offered in the US, but as of right now, that's not something that Pilot USA offers, and I'm sorry. Francisco H. on Facebook, would the Prera suit a student? I have a Metropolitan, but I'm looking to branch more into the pilot brand. Um, sure, yeah, if you like the Metropolitan, the Prera is a, another good option. Excuse me. The nice thing about the Prera is it's got a clear body. You can see your ink level. Um, however, on a Metropolitan, you know, you can put a Con 50 converter on there if you if you buy one. Um, it doesn't come with a Con 50, but then, then you get a clear a clear converter. That's one of the, the main pluses. Um, there's this weird thing with Pilot in the U.S. anyway. I don't know how it is in Japan, but they have you know several pens in the lower price range. The Plumix, the Metropolitan is awesome. The Parallel that are all very affordable. The Varsity, you know, very affordable kind of student grade, I guess, pens. Then there's the Prera, which is like a $70 list price. So it's a bit of a jump. You know, 56 is where it ends up being um, most online retailers. And then the next pen up is the Vanishing Point and the Falcon, which is 140, 144, or whatever. That's it. So the only thing literally between the $15 Metropolitan and the $140 Vanishing Point is the Pereira. I wish there were more options in the middle there, especially because I'm a big fan of the Pilot stuff, but that's all there is right now. Um, it's kind of, kind of interesting. So that said, um, you're not really gonna gain a whole lot of functionality going from the Metropolitan to the Prera. They actually use the same type of nib. You can swap the nibs in between those two pens, which I'll get more into here in a minute because I did get questions about that. Um, but, you know, other than aesthetics and other than going from a metal to a plastic pen, it's a little bit lighter, I guess. It's a clear pen, so maybe you care about that, maybe not. Other than some kind of uh, subjective things, there's really not a whole lot of difference between the way those two write. Uh, so that said, I don't know that one's going to necessarily be better, better than the other, especially because as a student, things like durability, um, you know, price affordability is, is key. Uh, so honestly, I would kind of stick with the Metropolitan if I were you. I know as a retailer and someone who may benefit from telling you to buy a more expensive pen, I should say go buy the more expensive Prera, but I honestly just love the Metropolitan. It's a solid pen. The one thing the Prera does have over the Metropolitan is the Prera is available in fine nib. So that's something. However, fine nibs are coming in the Metropolitans pretty soon. Uh, and I will get more on that in a minute because that is a question further down my line here. Um, there are some other non-pilot options you could look for. You know, I know this is a pilot Namiki. 
focus here, but because Pilot doesn't serve that middle range too much, that $50, you know, $50 to $75 range, I did want to recommend some other pens that are kind of in that range. You got several options from Twisby, so you've got the 580, the Mini, the Classic, um, the, even the, the VAC 700 would be an option. Lamy Safari and All Star, solid pens. The Monteverde's got a bunch, the Intima, Prima, Invincia, Impressa. Those are all options for you in that range that, are, that I would kind of recommend. Next question from Dylan K on Facebook. I was browsing eBay looking for well-priced Pilot Vanishing Points and I came across some earlier models from the 60s and 70s. I couldn't find any reviews on these older models and I was wondering if they would be a wise purchase. Oh boy, that is subjective. A wise purchase, it's all gonna depend on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, it's not gonna be a new pen, I can tell you that much. Uh, from the 60s and 70s, wow, that, that, goes, that goes back a bit. You know, that's definitely, definitely way before my time. Uh, and I am really not super knowledgeable of the vintage vanishing points. Um, there's other sites out there that I've seen that have more information on that kind of stuff. I can't recommend a specific one. Um, Fountain Pen Network would be a good place to, to kind of ask around for that, that level of question. Uh, what I can say is I know that some of the older vanishing points, the nib units and stuff and converters and whatnot were a little bit different. So you, you know, unless you're buying the pen in good working condition, you may want to be careful about that because if it needs any refurb or replacement nib unit or anything like that, you're going to have to buy a vintage one and you're not going to be able to buy a new one and swap it out into that one. So be aware of that. That's the only thing really that I can say about that. Um, Shara E on Facebook said, how many pages of writing should the ink in a fully filled Con 70 provide given one has medium sized writing? Okay, so there's, I can't give you an exact number, and I'm sorry for that, because there are just way too many factors in how many pages, I guess, you'll, of writing you'll get. Um, so I'll give you my best guess and say maybe 30. I don't know, it's completely subjective, because you've got paper absorbency as a factor, huge factor. You've got the paper size. You know, I'm assuming you're asking about an A4 size, like eight and a half by 11 kind of thing, but I don't really know. It could be a journal, it could be who knows. So the paper size obviously is a huge factor. The ink that you're using and how much it flows, how lubricated it is, how dry writing, all that stuff is a factor. The nib size you're using makes a huge difference. The relative humidity in the air impacts the absorbency of the paper, which is another factor the writing pressure you're using, the writing angle, even the writing speed that you're using can all factor into how much ink goes down on the page. So there's just way too many variables, so I don't really know. However, what I am gonna try to do is give you a, an idea or a comparison based on some of the other converters that are out there. Um, so I had a video from August 15th of 2013 called Pilot Converter Ink Capacities, and I compared um, several different things. So I had the Pilot Naminki ink cartridges, which is about 0.9 milliliters. I had the Pilot cleaning converter, which is the squeeze converter that is in the Pilot Metropolitan and the Pilot Parallel. Those converters are not available for purchase separately, but they come in those two pens. And they are a 0.9 milliliter ink capacity as well. Same as the cartridges. You've got the Con 20, which is the squeeze converter that you can buy separately. It's just a little beefier version of the cleaning converter. And that one is also 0.9 milliliters. The Pilot Con 50 is the clear, you know, no kind of normal looking twist converter that Pilot offers. Now there's two versions of that, an older version that did not have a metal agitator in it and the newer ones that have been coming out for the last two years or so that do have a metal agitator in it. Without the metal agitator, it's about 0.7 milliliters. With the agitator, it's 0.6 milliliters. So 0.6 to 0.9, that's a pretty decent jump. And then the Con 70, last one, this seems to be a pretty popular topic on this Q&A. This one is 1.0 milliliters, slightly more than you get from the squeeze converters. So with all that in mind, I would say that if you are purely going for ink capacity, 
you can achieve the greatest ink capacity either by refilling ink cartridges or by using the squeeze converter. You don't have to buy a pen that fits the Con 70 purely for ink capacity. Now, some things that I like about the Con 70 over the cleaning or the um, the squeeze converters is that, or the refilling cartridges for that matter. Um, refilling cartridges, you have to have an ink syringe. There's really not another way to do it. Um, the squeeze converters, the thing that I don't like about them is it's really tough to get a completely full filling. You know, it just got a rubber sack in there and you squeeze it and it's really tough to completely fill that thing out unless you want to use an ink syringe on that too, which you can, it's totally viable. Um, but to, to get a completely full filling on the Con 70 is a lot easier than it is on the squeeze converters. Plus, you get the added bonus of a clear ink window on these converters than you do on these squeeze converters. Um, so, you know, in terms of how long you're going to be able to write, this is kind of where I'm looping back to your original question here, you're not going to get a vastly significant difference in ink volume with this converter over the squeeze converters, but you will over the Con 50. You're going to get about, you know, 80% increase from the Con 50 up to this thing. Uh, and that will make a huge difference. Not to mention getting a full filling on this one is a lot easier than some of the other converters. So um, what you can do is check out my video from February 10th of 2014 called How to Fill a Pilot Con 70 Converter. That's my famous BAM video for any of you who have already watched that. You'll appreciate that little reference. I don't know why I kept saying that in the video, but BAM, there it is. Uh, let's see here. I think I covered everything that I wanted to on that question. Uh, question eight, I had Bill M on Facebook and Bill said, are the nibs and feeds on the custom series the same for all three pens? They all seem cool, but an extra $130 might not be worth it to some people who just want the vacuum bill. Okay, so the three pens that Bill is talking about here is the Pilot Custom 74, the Pilot Custom Heritage 92, and the Pilot Custom 823. So they all have custom in the name. They're all kind of a similar series of pen. Um, the Custom 74 and the Custom Heritage 92 are somewhat similar pens. They do actually use the same nib in those pens. So as far as a writing experience goes, you're not getting any difference between those two. The difference you're getting, some slight aesthetic differences, the Custom Heritage 92 is clear. Now I know in Japan they have a Custom 74 in clear. They don't have that in the US. They have it in five other colors, but not clear. So if you want a clear pen, Custom Heritage 92. Plus that's a piston filling pen as opposed to a cartridge converter in the Custom 74. Now the Custom 823 is a little bit different bird, okay? Because it it is a vacuum filling pen and I don't have it on me to be able to show you, but um, check out my video on the Custom Heritage 92 because I show all three pens and what makes them different in that video. In retrospect, I wish I'd broken it out into a separate video. However, I didn't. So you'll have to look into that video. It's somewhere around like six or seven minutes, I wanna say. Um, so check that out. But as far as the writing experience goes, it's gonna be fairly similar. It's got a bigger nib, so it's a slightly larger nib. If the Pilot ones are a number five, we'll say, the, the Custom 823 is a number six, so it's slightly larger, slightly longer, but it's still a 14 karat nib, so it doesn't feel incredibly different. It is a little bit bigger though, if that matters to you. Aesthetically too, it's a gold, yellow gold, instead of the rhodium plated gold. So the $130 you're paying for the Custom 823, part of it is the vacuum filling, part of it's the larger nib, it's a little bit different pen, it's a heavier pen, larger pen, higher ink capacity, that's what, you're, that's what you're paying for. But unless you really want that vacuum fill, it's not worth it. That's my opinion. Uh, Rob P on Facebook had the next question. Can the Falcon nib be used for everyday writing or is the line variation cumbersome when taking notes? Also, do you think Goulet will ever sell Pilot Metropolitan nibs? I really enjoy using my Pilot Metropolitan but feel a fine nib would better suit my needs. It would be great if the nibs could be swapped like on the Lamy Safari. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Rob. Okay, so you got two questions in here. I'm gonna answer the first one. 
asking about if the Falcon can be used for everyday writing. Yes, it can. It's, a, it's not technically a flex nib pen. It's a soft nib. Soft nib is a term that's used for pens that have some flexibility to them, but they're not marketed as flex pens per se. So when you're writing with them, it doesn't have a primary purpose of flexing, I'll say. So it does require some intentional pressure in order to get that flexibility. So in that respect, I would say, yes, you can use the pens as a daily writer without flexing, as long as you have moderate to light writing pressure. If you know for a fact that you have a very heavy hand, you may have a bit of a harder time with this soft nib than you would with a, a conventional stiff nib. That's, that's where I'll kind of leave it there. The extra fine is where it gets a little bit iffy because the extra fine, because that nib is so tiny, and this is a Japanese nib we're talking about here, they grind them a little bit finer than the Europeans do. Um, that one gets a little bit tougher to use without flexing because it's such a small nib tip that you're dealing with that you really have to have light pressure. So I would say if you're using a fine, medium, especially the broad, normal writing pressure, you should be fine. The extra fine though, you really need to have light pressure. Um, there you go. And when you're trying to write, if you're actually trying to write using line variation, it will definitely slow you down. All right, let's see here. Okay, and then the second question you had was about the Pilot Metropolitan. You said a fine nib would better suit your needs. First thing I want to say is the Metropolitan medium nib, which is everything we've seen so far from Pilot, is pretty, pretty is kind of on the fine side. It's not a true fine, I would say, but it's a little bit finer than most of the mediums you might see from Lamy and some of the other brands. So that's been kind of nice. However, there's been a lot of demand for fine nibs. We have been like, before these pens even came to us, we were advocating like, can this pen come in a fine nib? As soon as we found out they have them in Japan, we were like, can you please bring in the fine nib? Uh, we've been working on that for a while. And you know, we're not like super influential, but we definitely make our opinion known to Pilot USA and they are going to be bringing in the Metropolitans in a Pilot Japanese fine nib. So I haven't seen them yet. I haven't written with them. I'm very excited to get them in my hands, but I'm expecting that it's gonna be about equivalent to most extra fine nibs in other pens. So that'll be exciting. Uh, they are gonna be coming very soon. We're told mid-May, early May, mid-May, something like that. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Early May. Oh, actually that's the next question. Okay, so I won't jump too far. Okay, well, okay, yeah. And then um, the other part you said, you, you'd like that it swaps between, you'd like it if it could swap like the Lamy Safari does. The Pilot nibs don't swap as easily as the Lamy nibs because the Lamy nibs just slide right off. You know, sometimes you need a piece of tape or something to get them off. Honestly, sometimes you don't. <clears throat> it's not that easy. You do have to actually like grab the nib and the feed together, pull them out of the pen together, pull the nib off the feed. It's just friction fit, so it's not the end of the world, but it's, it's, a, little it's a little bit more involved, slightly, than Lamy. Uh, that said, they also don't offer separate nibs available from the pens. Now, keep in mind, the Metropolitan is a $15 pen with a converter in a case. The Lamy nib alone is $13. So, I'm sure the reason they don't offer Metropolitan nibs is because the pen is so affordable. It really is affordable really affordable for what you're getting, it's just not worth it for them to sell the nibs separately. They'd probably have to sell the nibs for around $13, just like Lamy does, and no one would buy them because the pens are so inexpensive. Um, that said, if you do want to swap the nibs between existing Pilot pens that you have, the Metropolitan, the Plumix, the Prera, they all swap nibs between each other. And then also, pens that are not currently available in the US the Kakuno, that's a new one with a smiley face on it. That one is um, available with the same nib. The Penmanship, that's got an extra fine nib, but isn't in the US. And then the 78G. Those are all swappable. Some of you may have those pens from dealers who you know, sell through eBay or other people that have brought them into the US through you know, non-Pilot USA channels. Um, they'll all swap nibs though. And then Winnie P on Facebook 
kind of tying into what I was just talking about, said, I have given three Metropolitans as gifts and everyone loves them. Awesome. They're perfect for newbies. Yes, I agree. They all ask about a fine nib. Any idea when they'll be available? Thank you. Yes, Winnie, they are going to be available. May 1st is the target launch date from Pilot USA. However, what we've come to find is that launch date means that's when they will ship them out to retailers. So it'll be a little bit after that. So maybe give it, give it maybe a week before you start to see it kind of available at most places. Um, that's the date as of right now. Here we are, it's April 25th right now. So, you know, not too long of a wait, really. Uh, we've been waiting for a while, ever since these pens came out a year and a half ago for these fine nibs to come available. So once they're finally here, it's gonna be great and I'm super excited. And I'll definitely have to do a review of those. Um, Wesley S on Facebook said, how long does the hooded nib of the vanishing point stay protected before drying out when not in use? I'm thinking of getting this pen for clinical work but I don't want to annoy my patients with constant clicking noises in between jotting notes. So yeah, okay, that's a fair, that's a fair point. Um, the click is not silent, you know. There you go. I'll <laughs> give you a little preview on my mic there. So it's not a it's not an it's not silent, right? So I totally get where you're coming from. Honestly, I don't have like any specific time for how long you can sit there with the nib out like this without it drying out. It's pretty good about doing that though. You know, it's got only a tiny little nib slit. It's not this gigantic thing with fins in the feed and stuff that are just gonna, you know, have a tendency to dry out. I've found it to go pretty long, a couple minutes, you know, and it'll depend on the ink too and the relative humidity in your environment and so on. So those are all factors, but you know, I would think that you'd be able to click it okay without disrupting too many people, but I don't know. That's, it's just, that's a tough question. You asked a really good question. I haven't really had a problem with it drying out for me, but this is where I'd really like to solicit some feedback from everybody else who's watching this video who has used the vanishing point a lot more. Me personally, I tend to use the vanishing point more for around the office. So I'm not up and about and clicking all day long. I use it more just kind of sitting at my desk. So I don't have firsthand experience going out and about and leaving it unclicked like that. So um, I will rely on others leaving comments to help me out on that one. Uh, Mike H on Facebook, you asked me, I was thinking about purchasing a Namiki Falcon, but I was wondering if you have any other pens in the price range that you would prefer. Okay, good point. Um, Namiki Falcon, it does have a soft nib, so that is something you have to take into consideration. For that pen in that price range, you know, it's gonna be hard to find anything with that nib softness. The only pen that I can really think of is a non-pilot pen. It's the Platinum Modern Maki A. That's a pen that's in a similar price range. It also has kind of a soft nib. It's not advertised as a soft nib, but it is a bit of a soft nib. You can get some, some flexibility to, out of it. Um, that's one, but it's, it's, um, it's a little bit different pen. It's a little more designed, a little more um, em embellished, flourished in its design than the, the Falcon is. Um, it's, it's a cartridge converter pen, same kind of thing. Um, so it's, it's a fairly comparable pen. It's a little bit lighter um, than you might think. It's a metal pen, but it just feels pretty light. I actually don't know how light it is compared to the Falcon. You can find that information on gulitpens.com though. So check that out, the Modern Machier. Um, but sticking a little more with the Pilot Pens, you've got the Custom 74, which is slightly more expensive. The, the, the Falcon is 144-ish. Custom 74 is more like 160. I love the Custom 74. I love the way it writes. I like the Vanishing Point too. For me personally, I use the Custom 74 a little more often. It's just how I roll. Um, the Vanishing Point is an obvious contender. If you like the Falcon and you like kind of the nib smoothness and the way that it writes and you like Pilot and it's right in that price range, the Vanishing Point, very popular pen. It's, it can take some getting used to because it's the click thing, but the fact that the clip is at the grip of the pen, it kind of makes it where some people love it, some people hate it. Most people love it though. Um, the Pilot Stargazer. This is a smaller pen. It's a little more of a pocket pen. It's got a little more weight to it. It's metal, so it's a little, you know, chunky, you know, not chunky, that really makes it sound bad. It's a, it's, it's a pen that um, hasn't really 
gotten as much traction as I would have thought, but I haven't really featured it much. I need to do a quick look on that one too, but um, that's kind of a neat pen that's right in that price range as well. I think that one's around 150. And then lastly, a non-pilot pen. I'm a big fan of the Lamy 2000. It's right in that range. Whenever I think of, you know, the Vanishing Point Custom 74 Falcon, Lamy 2000 is right in there with the rest of them. I love it. I use that pen a lot too. So that's another option for you. Couple more questions here. Just bear with me. Hang on. Grab another sip of coffee, which I have right here. Actually, I think I'll take a sip myself. Hmm. Thank you. Thanks for listening to my gurgling as I'm talking here. It's amazing how dry your mouth gets talking for like 45 minutes at a time. Anyway, <clears throat> Neil K on Facebook, you said, what is the future direction of the name branding? Is everything moving to Pilot or will they continue to maintain the Namiki branding for high-end products? I know that Vanishing Point is in transition. That is correct. You are right. Um, and that became glaringly obvious when the Pilot Falcon came out. So you have the Namiki Falcon, which has incredible brand recognition. Everybody knows, I mean, not every, okay, not everybody. A lot of people know the Namiki Falcon. If they're into fountain pens, you've kind of pretty much heard of the Namiki Falcon. So Namiki and Pilot are under the same company. So it's all Pilot. So. Namiki was, let me look at my notes here because I don't have this memorized. So everything is gonna be moving to Pilot, right? Except for the very high-end stuff. You got the Sterling collection and you know a lot of the limited edition Yurushi, like Makie type stuff, multiple thousand dollar pens. Those limited edition things, those are all gonna remain Namiki. Everything else below is going to be Pilot. So you already have that a lot with like the Pilot Custom 823, Pilot Vanishing Point, a lot of that. You've got the Pilot Orochizuku line of ink. That was intentional. Um, the Namiki Falcon was one of the kind of the lingering pens that was under the Namiki name, but was moving to Pilot. And it's already doing that. The Rhodium Trim Falcon is called the Pilot Falcon. The Namiki Falcon in gold is eventually going to transition over to Pilot as well. I'm not sure exactly at what point, but it will. And then also you've got the Vanishing Point. The normal Vanishing Points in the $140 range, they are Pilot. But the Raiden Vanishing Points are all Namiki. I believe those are moving over to the Pilot name as well. Um, so little little background there. I've checked out the Pilot Japan website, was able to find a little bit of information there. Hey, Dad. You, uh, I'm shooting a video. Oh, <laughs> That's all right. Can you go give this to Rachel? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that was my dad. He helps watch my kids on, on uh, Wednesdays when I'm shooting this video. I normally shoot it on Thursdays. Today's Wednesday, so my dad was just... My kids are down for a nap now, so my dad was just going to hand me <laughs> the baby monitors so they could watch them. Okay, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, so, yes. Um, totally lost my train of thought. Yeah. So... Pilot Japan website, I checked it out. You can check it out yourself too. Basically, the brand was founded by, and I will butcher his name, I'm sorry, Ryosuke Namiki. That was the guy's name. In 1918, that's when the company was founded. During World War II, they changed the name to Pilot to make it less Japanese sounding <laughs> in 1938. So it became Pilot then, and then Basically, Namiki is a name brand that's been used in the U.S., I believe, exclusively for the higher-end products. Pilot, you know, they've got like the G2 ballpoint gel pen. You've got, you know, the Pilot Prera, the Plumix, the Metropolitan, you know, like a lot of these, call them lower-end pens. But the higher-end pens used to be kind of Namiki. Even the Vanishing Point used to be the Namiki Vanishing Point kind of back in the day. Um, but they've been kind of transitioning over to Pilot. So I don't really know what the swing is all about, but it seems like, you know, that's everything's moving over to Pilot uh, kind of worldwide. So that's the best information I have. Um, Michelle L on Facebook, this is the last question for this Q&A. So hurry up and finish up your coffee or tea. <laughs> 
I know everyone loves the Metropolitan, the Prera, Namiki Falcon, and the Custom 74, but what are some other pilot models that are underrated and few people rave about? I love Japanese pens and would love to know your opinion. Okay, Michelle. Well, I've already touched on pretty much the whole pilot line at this point, but some of my favorites. Um, you know, you mentioned the Metropolitan Prera Falcon Custom 74, all great pens. Um, the Pilot Vanishing Point, that really isn't an underrated pen, it's a highly rated pen. If you go and look on goulaypens.com, you'll see multiple five-star ratings across all different colors for this pen. Huge, hugely popular pen. So that is an easy one. $140 for, for most of those. There's some more expensive rating versions. Those are really popular. A lot of people love them. The only thing is the grip. Some people may not love the grip, but not much else to complain about with those pens. Um, another pen, the Stargazer. It's a $152 pen. So that one is definitely more of an underrated pen. I'm not going to say underrated, but just undiscovered kind of at this point. Um, you know, it comes available in a fine and medium nib. The fine nib, I've been using one of those personally, it writes pretty fine. So I, I, it's a great kind of little pocket carry around pen. Really durable, it's, it's very, very attractive looking pen. So that's one that I know I'm gonna have to do a video on at some point. Uh, another one that, that is, has a kind of a, a cult following, the Pilot Parallel. Now these are, you know, basically italic nib pens. Um, but they are really, really cool. Just really fun pens to use. If you go back and find, got a pretty old video on the Pilot Parallel. I'll let you go and find it and discover it. But it's the, I think the only video under the Goulet Pens name that Rachel has shot by herself. Um, it was really funny. It was back in the early days when we were shooting videos in our house and uh, it's really kind of neat. But go check out that video. I think if you go and look on the on the Pilot Parallel product page on our site, you'll see that video. It's kind of neat. Uh, and then the Pilot Varsity is another pen. Um, that one's got kind of a fan following as well, but that is a great pen, especially if you want to give a pen to somebody who really just doesn't really want to, they're kind of resisting fountain pens a little bit, give them a Varsity because it's preloaded with ink. You don't have to clean it. You don't have to worry about maintaining it or anything like that. It's a great way to kind of be like, here, here's a $3 pen. Try writing with it and see how you like the smoothness of writing with a fountain pen. Once they get kind of sold on that, then they might buy in a little bit more to, okay, what's this whole fountain pen thing all about? Great pen. And if you really want to do a hack, you can refill the Varsity. That's another video that I've been meaning to do. Dang it, got so many videos I want to do. So Pilot Varsity, you technically can refill it like an eyedropper pen. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Go look on YouTube, Refill Pilot Varsity. There's several different kind of people that have done videos. Everybody's kind of got their own flair for the way they refill them, but that's, that's a, a neat thing to be able to do. And then the last one, this is, I don't know if I want to call this an underrated pen. The Pilot Kakuno is a new one that's come out. It's got the similar nib to the Metropolitan and the Prera, so it's not like earth shattering in that respect, but it does have a smiley face engraved on the nib. It's really fun. It's a, it's a fun pen. Uh, I don't have them. They're not in the US yet. And from everywhere that I've seen, there's a worldwide shortage of those pens. They're just sold out everywhere. So you can't even find them, even on you know whatever, eBay Japan or something like that. Um, but that's another underrated pen that I, I am really trying to pull for them to bring that into the US. We'll see. I don't know. We got we got fine Metropolitans coming, so you know if we if we keep on yelling long enough, we may see Kakunos coming in as well. But there's no guarantee of that. Let me have a proper disclaimer and say that I am not the almighty and powerful pilot pilot decider here. But uh, you know I think it'd be pretty cool to see that. So that's all the questions I've got for this week. Um, next week it's going to be May second. And I will be doing it, imagine that, back-to-back -back weeks again. It'd be kind of nice. So that week, um, you know, we did a branded, branded theme this week. We're going to go back to an open forum next week, blow it wide open. Whatever questions you have, fountain pens, ink, paper, wax seals, whatever the heck, tips and tricks, anything you can ask me, and I'm more than happy to answer as many of your questions as I possibly can. So I hope you have a wonderful week. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, because I'm gonna be putting out lots of great stuff here coming in the future. Got lots of other videos to discover. And, you know, just dive back into my back catalog. Go and look at some of the old videos when I was 60 pounds heavier and was shooting a video in my sweatshirt and glasses with laundry piled up in the background. 
it's, it's uh, just kind of fun to just go back and watch those because you really realize like how much this this uh, production has changed. Production, I'll call it that, but how much things have changed for me over the last couple of years. It's kind of neat. And I got a lot of good stuff that if you dive back, you can go check it out. Um, if you got any questions for the open forum for next week, you can leave a comment on YouTube here. You can leave a comment on Inc. Nouveau. You can hashtag Goulet QA on Twitter. Shoot an email to Goulet QA at GouletPens.com or leave a question on Facebook when we do our Facebook post. Usually it'll be around Tuesday or so next week. So that'll be cool. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful week. Um, it's good to be back. I'm happy to be here. I appreciate you spending all your time with me. And as always, right on.